All right, how's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a Saturday night. It is the Earth Master out here, about uh, 8.23 p.m. California time here, just outside of Chico, California. April 5th, 2025 is the date. Latest activity here on the Earthquake 3D Globe. Let's see what we got. Looks like a 3.1 across the uh, Texas area. Oil fields out there. Gas and oil fields getting hit pretty good out there in the region of Texas. There it is, popping up a little bit further west of that uh, swarm going on out there around Pecos, Texas. As far as California goes, a couple earthquakes out here across the southern end of the uh, Gorda Plate. We've got one earthquake right now with a 2.7 earthquake here. We'll watch this because most of the time earthquake activity here in this zone, a little strike slip boundary there. Uh, further add strain out here across the southern end of the Cascadia. Uh, looks like uh, earlier this afternoon, the three-pointer coming in just off the Mendocino Point, uh, the Mendocino Fault Zone. And uh, another further earthquake down here, a little bit uh, further to the southeast there along the uh, southern end of the Cascadia. Let's go ahead and check out Trimmer map this night, uh, tonight. See what we have here for the Cascadia Trimmer, which uh, shows 78 epicenters all right that's a little bit of an uptick after a week or so of no trimmer here's the last week got about 122 epicenters of trimmer today just starting to key back up there in terms of the count number mainly across the southern end here of the cascadia subduction zone now if you remember we've had a number of earthquakes out here across the gorda plate you pull this up um right here these earthquakes off of the uh, Blanco Fracture Zone area and the Gorda Ridges here. This is a spreading seafloor center. Notice the ridges. Obviously, this is uh, uh, creating that uh, divergent activity. These ridges here adding stress and strain out here. This is actually a sign of stress and strain here for the Cascadia Subduction Zone over time, obviously. But most of the time when we see earthquake activity out here, that means that it's pushing this region, the plate, what's left of the Gorda Plate there, underneath the North American plate, and that's the Cascadia subduction zone. And that's pretty much where uh, we're seeing the trimmer activity take place here today down across this region and the uh, the southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone. Nothing, uh, nothing big, but as always, do like to keep an eye on things out there. Uh, for the San Francisco Bay region, pretty quiet. A handful of smaller quakes, but uh, overall quiet conditions. Uh, West Coast, like I said, we're starting to move a little bit out here. Notice a handful of earthquakes up here at the north, uh, the uh, San Andreas Fault, and also down here across the southern end of the San Andreas Fault. So even though these are very small microquakes, we're just starting to move out here in terms of uh, some adjustment. You know, if you were to look at the 2.5 map and above, you would say, wow, California is awfully quiet. But we're always seeing aftershock or uh, uh, microquake activity out here on any given day. And there's a number of them. We just got to watch these little ones, see where they're at. And it uh, looks like they're on a broad scale type of event right now from north to south. We'll definitely keep an eye there on California. Uh, the Yellowstone up there, nothing showing up, but it is the weekend. And the USGS does not report earthquake activity there if it's under a certain magnitude. And in this case, most of the time, it's it's got to be above 2.5 for the uh, earthquakes to show up there across the USGS map. For Yellowstone, not seeing a whole lot of earthquake activity. Maybe one or two right here. That did show up on Little West Thumb and also Grant Village, uh, but that's about it. There's really not any other activity that I'm noting there across the region of Yellowstone. Pretty quiet. Rest of the country pretty quiet as well. A lot of uh, I've seen some articles here today talking about rainfall accumulation over the. Uh, new Madrid seismic zone. So I kind of want to chat about that real quick. Now, um, any fault system out there, right? If you really think about it, where's my windy map here? Let me find that real quick. Um, any fault system, or whether it's along a plate boundary like the San Andreas Fault or the uh, New Madrid seismic zone, you put a lot of rain on there. It's possible, um, you know, if it gets down there a little bit, it could lubricate the fault, so to speak and uh, maybe add a little bit of elevated activity when it comes to um, potential earthquake activity. 
Although, you know, most of this rainfall showing up here is outside of the region. Now, I know they've had quite a bit here in the last couple of days. And just kind of watching that, seeing if this rainfall here in the coming days will elevate uh, the earthquake activity around the New Madrid seismic zone. Now, that's a major area here across uh, a number of states. And back in 1811, 1812, they've seen a series of large earthquakes, not just one, but a, a number of seven-pointers. Uh, some even saying that maybe they were low eight grade magnitudes out here. It's an intraplate earthquake or an intraplate fault system here away from the um, the plate boundary. It kind of sits out there in a failed rift system, so to speak, a long, long time ago. But uh, strain stress does build up out here. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm not 100% certain if we have enough here in 200 and something years, right? 1811 to today's date. Uh, I don't know if there's enough strain built up here to produce a, you know, another similar sequence of events like they've seen there back in 1811, 1812. But uh, we'll watch and see if the elevated rainfall that's been uh, occurring out here will get down there into the uh, below the surface area and maybe uh, create some earthquake activity out there. I do like to watch it. California, one of them, you know, Southern California has had a number of uh, wet winters out here. And it, it, it coincides with the number of four-pointers that we've seen out here last year. We've seen a whole bunch of four-pointers all across Southern California. And those four-pointers followed the uh, a couple wet winters out here. A lot of rainfall across the area. So whether it's in relation to that or not, uh, you know, it, it's, got, uh, it's definitely got a little relation, I think, uh, in terms of the rainfall and the number of earthquakes that we've seen out here uh, in last year. So we'll, we'll just kind of keep an eye on that, right? If you really think about it, dumping a whole bunch of rainfall out here has to have some type of effect on the fault systems. Right now, not so much, though, across the new Madrid seismic zone, pretty quiet. As uh, far as worldwide activity goes, still got a number of earthquakes here across the Papua New Guinea area. Uh, looks like the latest of 4.5. Um, not a whole lot further back across this area of the Tonga Trench over the past couple days here. We've been watching, you know, larger earthquake activity out here. And it jumps back here to deeper activity. Then we see more activity across this region. Leaving this zone here in what we call a seismic gap zone, uh, it has yet to fill in. I'm really surprised and shocked that we have not seen uh, any activity here within these two regions that have been bouncing back and forth here. Uh, between earthquakes uh, with earthquake activity New Zealand a number of twos and threes it looks like down there um, still a trail of deep activity here across the Tonga and the Kermadec Trench watch this area though around the Vanuatu region Solomon Islands uh, some further activity around Myanmar with the four-pointer coming in right now it looks like following that big seven pointer here a number of days back still seeing aftershock activity there and that will continue always a chance here that we could see uh you know another six or so in that area uh for the rest of the uh, globe out here minimal earthquake activity across the atlantic a couple earthquakes down in the south sandwich trench uh some further activity up in the northern atlantic it looks like but uh overall uh, you know, quite elevated out here across this area of the globe. California, not so much, right? We just got a couple smaller microquakes, but we'll definitely watch it here. Uh, some migration northward here along the Middle America Trench just off the coast of Mexico. We'll watch that, see if the uh, areas upstream here don't get uh, further active. We'll definitely keep that uh, in check or in mind there tonight. Uh, flaring activity, unfortunately, here... Uh, uh, there's 4054. That's the, one of the newer sunspots out here. Let's see what it looks like right now in the latest magnetogram image. Decent. Uh, not super impressed, but it's trying. It's almost like that little thunderstorm that could, you know, or was a little train that could. I can't remember. <laughs> but uh, yeah, watch that one. It's starting to pop up a little bit. The massive sunspot here that. Uh, I had my hopes up for has uh, just degraded here. It's not looking impressive whatsoever. This is continuing to stretch and pull apart and uh, leaving with it, uh, well, clear cut separation there of the core and the magnetic polarities. Not really expecting much here from that sunspot area. So I guess really all we have to 
watch here is maybe a couple out here on the western limb but these are going to be out of sight out of mind very soon and we're left maybe here with this little guy that might produce some flaring but uh, the flare threat is dropping right now these guys it looks like they've raised their flare threat i don't know why x flare but uh i, I don't see any reason for the x flare being elevated uh, no major roars in the forecast. Still looks like maybe some unsettled conditions here. Maybe tonight. Uh, but I, I'm really not expecting much. Storm Prediction Center out there. Still seeing a little moderate risk here tonight. Looks like very small region here. Uh, looks like around uh, Corinth. Is that right? Mississippi area? For uh, a little region that has a decent chance of seeing some tornado activity here. Um, overnight and early Sunday morning. Some wind and hail threats in there as well. So just a heads up. Uh, there's all that rainfall that's been just soaking the New Madrid seismic zone. I've, I've seen this image a lot being shared on social media, and it's pretty much directly right over the New Madrid seismic zone. A lot of rainfall has been uh, uh, accumulating there across the area. So, like I said, we'll watch here in the coming days, see if we don't get some elevated activity there following all this drenching of rainfall across that intraplate earthquake uh, region. A lot of earthquake, or a lot of rainfall coming into the Texas area and Arkansas once again as we head towards uh, a little bit deeper into April. Crazy, but it is that time of year. It's always active out here across this region. Uh, high pressure across the west. Not seeing a whole lot of activity out there right now for... Uh, Rainfall, unfortunately, but hey, April is really not a super wet month for us. In fact, we're getting into our dry season out here across Northern California. I'm just very thankful that we've had a decent winter and uh, everything's super green out here and we've uh, pretty much out of the drought. Let me ch check out the drought conditions out here from the windy site. By the way, this model, this uh, weather app is one of my favorites because there's so much you can look at here. Fire, danger, weather warnings. Drought monitoring is the one I'm after. Boy, in the last couple months, this has really cleared up in terms of the drought activity out here. I've got more than enough rainfall uh, that's been uh, hitting this area recently. Still quite a bit of drought down across the desert southwest. And there goes my mouse. <laughs> Goodness. Hold on a second here. Just kind of fell off there like that. Find out where I was. Oh, where'd I go here? Uh, hold on a second here. Interesting. Very interesting how that happened. I don't know what happened, but uh, anyway, we'll uh, do I have Wendy up here on this one? Let's see here. I, maybe I don't. Anyway, all right, folks, I think I'm going to jump off here, get this video uploaded, and uh, maybe call it a night. I know it's a little early, 8.37 p.m., that's California time here, but uh, I don't know. I'm tired. been outside doing a bunch of yard work here all night, or all day, and uh, just ready to call it, I think. Nothing wrong with an early bedtime once in a while. Uh, we'll catch you guys out here in the morning sometime. For the uh, Sunday morning update. In the meantime, have a good night and please stay safe out there. We'll catch you guys later.